Hello, this is Stephen Cook of Cooksaw Manufacturing down in South Alabama. Continuing with our uh, hydraulic series, this is the, the third in, the, in a series and probably our final video. Uh, just giving a, an overview of the hydraulics on our sawmill and, and really general functions uh, that you will have on other pieces of equipment, whether it's skid steers or, or uh, even on bucket trucks and all kind of things. They're using hydraulics a lot of time and they use different types of valve. We've talked about the manual valve. We've mentioned the pumps and double pumps. Uh, we're going to talk about electric valve in this case. And you can get uh, these electric valves uh, in different voltages and different things. But I'll show you what we do and a little bit of why we do. And I'll take one end off of this and, and show you a little bit of troubleshooting techniques on that that'll be helpful, whether it's on our sawmill or again, on some other piece of equipment. It's good to know this. And if you have some basic knowledge, boy, it really helps out. We do use manual valves and then electric valves. Part of the reason we use electric valves <clears throat> is we're able to control them at, while we're walking around. We have a remote control box, we call it, and we've got switches that activate these uh, valves here as well as valves up in here for different things, where we want to turn on this belt or where we want to raise the head up and down. I just press a button, and if you've watched our demo videos, you've seen this. I just press a button or, or press up or press down. We have a switch, a valve I haven't really talked about is uh, these little needle valves and, and then a bypass valve, we call it. It's a valve that closes off a flow and makes it go another direction. So we can slow down. Uh, so as we're moving fast, we can, we can flip a switch and it throws it and it goes through a needle valve and slows it down. All that's done and we're able to do that because of electric valve. This is actually a little electric valve as well in that bypass valve. But that's the purpose of it. I can walk over here and I can look. I can come back here and I can look down the mill. I can see what's going on. I can move my guide in and out because of these electric valves. And, and that gives me a lot of versatility uh, where I can be moving around whereas when I'm up at the manual valves, I'm dealing in the bed. So we've tried to put this together in a way that makes the most sense. And, uh, and again, we can do some you know, different things from time to time uh, if someone would have a special need. Our valves, we've got two right here, we've others around on it. But these are called, and this is a size, a DO5 valve. There's a, there's a diagram here, a schematic of, of what they do. I won't get into all that, there's different types. We use what's called a tandem, sometimes we call it a closed center, because when it springs to center, uh, it's closed off and it holds something in place. And, and there's a, some variations around that that you can get into, and displacement in cylinders and different things. But, but essentially, uh, in some places, we want to hold something in place, as, as in when our head is all the way up, uh, we've got it on a, on a 90 degree gearbox with a hydraulic motor driving that, but when it stops, the gearbox holds it, but we also have that in a closed center so that no hydraulics are moving or leaking one way or another. And so in that case, that's what we want. Now in another case, where we're going forward in reverse, uh, we don't want that thing to be closed center because what does closed center do? It stops it. We want an open center. And so it shifts back to neutral uh, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute, but it shifts back to neutral and there is a groove around this spool that's in there that's moving back and forth and that lets this coast to a stop instead of slamming on brakes. And so we want an open center there so that when we turn it off, it has a little bit of coast of, of 12 inches or something instead of a stop. So they have a purpose for, for whatever situation you're needing. DO5 valve is, is a larger valve. We used to use what's called a DO3 valve and something that uh, we, we uh, noticed, had a little trouble, and this would have been oh, well over tw 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, uh, as we moved up in engine and horsepower and gallons per minute, moving faster, sawing faster, uh, sometime we would shift these switches and, uh, and then you turn it off and the thing keep going, keep going up or keep going forward. And the more we checked into that, talked to our suppliers and engineers, uh, we were, we were putting too much flow through too small of a valve. So if you ever run into that, sometimes that can be the issue. We go to bigger valves, and in this case, we went from what we call a DO3 to a DO5 valve to let more gallons per minute, just bigger holes. And what was happening, we were forcing so much fluid through there when this thing, uh, when, when you go neutral, you, you have electricity on one side to make it go one direction, electricity on the other side 
to make it go the other direction, just like pressing a lever on the manual valves. But these, um, when, it would, when you would turn the current off, it's supposed to shift back to the center. Well, there was so much pressure and so much fluid, fluid more than pressure, volume coming through it, but hold that valve in one direction. And that's why sometime it would take a second or two to stop. You'd see a delay and things of that nature. So uh, that's just an interesting thing that we, we learned. On electric valves, they're pretty much all uh, the same. They may be larger or smaller, different make, they're a little bit different one way or another, but you have a coil, uh, electromagnet basically. You can see the two pegs on this. I like this one because it's so easy to just plug in. Some of them many years ago, and I'm sure they still make them, you would take these off and, and they say it's where you wire it, but there'd be two wires coming out and it was a little bit more, more to wire. Whereas this one just plugs in and, and we like that. As well as it's easy. They, they don't go out hardly ever, but occasionally, you know, we'll have somebody call and say, my hydraulics won't work. Well, we start walking through uh, questions. Uh, number one is we need to know, is your hydraulic flow working? And you may say, well, I don't know I do. Well, if you've got a hydraulic, a manual hydraulic lever, uh, valves, you can just press that lever and, hey, if that thing works, we know our pump's working. So, you know, you go through a little process of elimination. One thing about these that I like, and, and sometimes a coil will just go out. It hardly ever happens, but we can ship you a coil like this, and they're not tremendously expensive. Instead of replacing the whole valve, you don't have the oil falling out and all that. You can, we can troubleshoot down and figure out if this is the problem or not. And how that works on these valves, electric valves, is right in the end here, there is a, a, a little a button that, that I can push in. I'm doing this with my pen here. Maybe a little stiffer than I was thinking. Yeah, pushed it in right there and it goes in. I'll see if I can show that on this other uh, camera here. There's, there's a pin right in here. And now when, when uh, the pressure is on, of course, that thing is a lot harder to activate. But that lets me activate this manually then. So uh, I can, you know, get right here with a, a screwdriver, a, usually a Phillips head or something that's small enough, or a T-handle uh, Allen wrench, or something I can press that with. And it's pretty hard when you're, when you're cranked up. Not so bad when, because when, I did it with this pin, when I don't have pressure on it. But if you have pressure on it, it may take 20 PSI. I mean, you may have to put some pressure on that thing. But when it activates, whatever that is doing, if it makes that cylinder move, the head move forward or up or down, then again, we know we've got hydraulics <clears throat> and we know we've, we've narrowed it down now more. It could be, you know, is it a switch, is it a this or is it that? We can actually change these, these coils on the solenoids and if it works in one direction and not the other. There's all kind of little things, but knowing that is, is helpful. Uh, you can manually activate it and that helps you figure out things that are going on. This mounts to a manifold and, and it's another way to just send the oil out where it needs to go. But these are real uh, nice valves, uh, heavy duty. Uh, they just work consistently, uh, easy to take care of. I, I, just, I really like those types of valves and they allow you again to move around and uh, do different things with that. I think this will be the end of our series just specifically on just the basics of the hydraulics on sawmills or, or, or hydraulics in general. Uh, but I, I would like to encourage you to, to go to and subscribe. You're on our YouTube channel, but, but subscribe to the YouTube channel then you can know when we put out new videos. We try to do this fairly regular uh, to, to keep information out there. But if you have questions uh, or a question, uh, could we do a certain thing one way or another that might help you answer a question, uh, we'll try to do that. Uh, we believe that uh, helping people solve problems, helping people be able to use what they've got better and easier uh, is what makes our business thrive. And, and we're blessed to have a good business and uh, we want to keep helping people. So. I uh, do encourage you to subscribe, go to our website, cooksaw.com, and look at it. A lot of other uh, things there you can do. So if you do that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much.